Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to the painting channel. Now I have been waiting quite a while to be able to put this video together and to share some information with you with regards to gouache and as the beginning of this video suggested it's out with the old and in with the new when it comes to understanding and approaching this subject. So I used to do the odd painting in gouache many many years ago. Those early tubes of paint you saw the, earlier on in this video stand testament to my meager supplies and um, the age of some of them got to be 30 odd years old some of them and the thing is that I used to do the odd painting I really never used the medium in conjunction with watercolor and I never was a designer I, I never used them as a flat coat which is what they were pretty much designed to do and for the animation maybe or whatever it was that they were used for as a design at all they worked beautifully because the colors were flat they were opaque and they could be layered and you had some fantastic uh, artwork created from them but i never really got into gouache in a big way so i had a few tubes and i did the odd painting with them but i never really stuck to it but in recent times i've seen a big surge of people uh, turning to gouache or looking at gouache as a pure art medium and I that's really got me quite excited again because it is a water-based medium and as a watercolorist as well as an oil painter I can come at gouache from both sides because the properties of gouache being an opaque layer layering type of medium means I can approach it like an oil painter but then it's a water base and I can thin it down just like a watercolorist would do and I've got those two options so it got me interested again I gotta say and interested enough to be able to rummage through some very very old boxes and find those few supplies that I had from all those years ago and I gotta say that some of them are still viable in the tubes I was quite surprised when I was playing around with the tubes and all the paint inside was serviceable usable and they will get used in time I'm sure but it got me thinking as to why would I want to go on and use gouache now as a medium? And why would I want to get back into it when I'm already doing oils, watercolors, pastels, even the odd acrylic? Uh, I, I've sort of always, as an artist, always try to make myself um, available to or my eyes open and using all types of media i think it makes you more rounded and i think that uh, when you consider materials or when you consider a medium that essentially there are certain rules in painting that cannot be argued they cannot be changed altered they're normally physical rules but they also in terms of color and other things they transcend all medium now the pigments we use in oils are the same as those in pastel in watercolor and it's only the um, vehicle to which the uh, manufacturer delivers that paint that dictates whether it's an oil paint or whether it's a watercolor or indeed a pastel so i felt that i wanted to uh, explore gouache again so i started looking at a lot of videos and there's an awful lot out there and i sort of narrowed down the issue to maybe just a couple of big issues when it comes to gouache and that is how to use the actual paint and how to store it how to keep it so what i've got here are two methods that i think are both um able to be considered and one of them is to have my paints in open pans like this and fill those and the other is to have a sealable uh, box where I can protect the uh, contents from drying out to the atmosphere and keep them moist and, and malleable. Now, I'm not sure which way to jump, to be fair. I've asked the question of several people, and this I used, this is probably the closest to the way I used to use my uh, gouache in the past, where I'd have a, a ceramic or something like that. I would pour some out of the tube use it nice and fresh on the day but over the next few days as it dried out i would carry on using it i would just reignite it with a bit of a spray uh, on the paint get it working again and it never seemed to fail so that's one way and i have to say i actually favor this way 
The point is that it doesn't matter which this one or this one that you use, both have got advantages and both have equal disadvantages. This one, it's there and you can use it, but it will dry out, it could crack. The more you spray water into this when it's malleable or when you're using it, as that dries back, then the cracks can, and fissures can form because there's more water and therefore the paint as it dries will contract more and split. So that's one disadvantage. The advantage is that once it's in here and is dry, it's not going to go everywhere. It's not going to cause you a problem. It's going to stay where it is, not unlike watercolors that you put into a pan and that will be fine. Now, if you look at a watercolor tin, this is my regular tin. These do not go everywhere. They stay where put and that's fine. And you can do very much the same thing with gouache. Now, this on the other hand, this was something I saw uh, several people using on YouTube and one that comes to mind and she's been quite a bit of help uh, with regards to this is Sarah Burns, a an American lady living in Scotland with her husband and she does an awful lot of gouache and if you don't know her channel, please pop on over there. She is an authority on gouache. She knows a lot about it. She uses it extensively in her work and it's well worth listening to. So I sort of got a hold of one of these. Now it comes with a um, folding cup underneath and uh, they're about 10 pounds and it, this sort of closes up and sits into the um, pot. At the moment the pot is a way being doing some having something else done to it so it's not with this component right now but I have the component itself and basically what you've got is a um, sort of flexible gelatin type of lid that will correspond with all these grids inside here and you put your paint in the idea is that you can use it fresh from the tube and when you finish your painting session you can quite literally put this on in place and then close the lid down and it's a little bit tight but it will then keep everything from spilling you can tip it over and it won't spill into the next compartment the drawback is and that I can see is that with this if it does tip on its side in your bag or your painting box or on its back in even worse the paint won't spill into the next chamber but what it will do is it will collect and build up into these areas in the lid now yes you can in theory spend time digging that out putting it back into each one there's 16 uh, available colors in here you'd be half your painting time trying to sort this mess out and putting it back in here without one part of it contaminating another part and that's not so easy and so if you really want to be careful then don't let this tip keep it completely flat in your case easier said than done but it is there and it is a very good device to be able to keep everything fresh keep the paint fresh and that also presents another problem and the problem is uh, the um, additional obstacle of mold forming on your paint some colors are more susceptible than others and different brands will probably depending on their makeup be more susceptible than other brands now i don't know uh, the science between any manufacturer's brands i tend to go for a tried and trusted name and hopefully that's what I've done with these. But you, you sort of have that situation where all the time this is open to the atmosphere, especially on warm days and summer days, uh, the bacteria is in the air and it's going to settle on the paint. Now, the paint itself is not the problem. What is the problem is the binder. If it's an organic binder, it will attract mold. Acrylic is phenomenally well known for this because the binder in most acrylic paints is an organic binder and the microbes in the atmosphere will settle on the paint and it will start eating away the binder and and that's why mold starts to form now you can do lots of things i've heard people talk about using glycerin or um, isopropanol alcohol and yeah i'm not too sure about any of that really long term i'm sure it works and i'm sh not sure of the amount that you would put in but at the same time, I think that uh, keeping something like this in a fridge 
is good. That's what I tell all my students to do with their acrylics on their stay wet palettes. Keep it in the fridge if you can. That keeps the temperature down and prevents the microbes actually getting started on the paint. And then just take it out, use it and do whatever. So good pluses, bad minuses. And it's the same for this uh, palette setup as well. It doesn't matter which way you go, you're going to have a problem. So what I think I'm going to do is I have ordered Schmincke. I've ordered a set. I have my paints in here and in here. And I'm going to use them from both sources. And I'm going to see which way over a period of the summer that really works for me. I'm going to be doing paintings from both of them. I'm going to take both of them out in the field. And primarily, I want these paints to go out in the field. I have my watercolor set for the field. I've either got this one or I've got a smaller one that I can use out in the field, depending whether I'm using a full watercolor kit or whether I'm using a small uh, sketch easel set that I've been developing. I say I've developed, I've just been putting some old kit together. I've not actually developed anything. Okay, so first and foremost, let's look at this pan. And I'm going to use or adopt the same method of application of color. Now, if I get it wrong, I can just swap the pans around, but uh, I hopefully won't get it too far out. And I'm going to start with the black. I don't normally buy a black, but I think there's a lot of reason to do that with gouache. And I'm actually going to follow the same convention. So let's put... Let's put this little beastie right next to the palette so that we can then employ the same way of doing it. So I'm going to put some black in there. Like so. Let that settle down. And I'm going to put some black in here. I'm not going to go too mad with it. I'm just going to leave that half filled on each one. And that's actually not bad. You, there's quite a bit of painting. There's quite a lot in there because these are full pans. And I barely touched the tube at all. So it doesn't take an awful lot of product to fill your pan. So I'm guessing that you can actually fill these pans a good number of times from this. Okay, so my next color, and I'm going to work through my earth tones. And then I'm going to come through my uh, primary colors after that. So my next color is going to be um, some burnt umber. So let's pour some into there. Okay, welcome back everyone. Now I'm aware that this video has gone on probably long enough already. So please, I hope you don't mind indulging me for a little longer. And I just wanted to play around with some of these colors and do something very, very simple. I'm using probably not the best paper, but I'm using my little old moleskin uh, sketchbook for this. I've just put some washi tape around to give myself a bit of a border. And I've got this color out here. Now, I tipped it on its back just very quickly, a few seconds, if that. And it touched like that already. You can imagine what mess you may end up with if you had this tip over on its side or indeed upside down in your carrier. So just be mindful of that. Could be a potential problem. Brushes. Now, I've only got some old ones. I don't really want to use any of my watercolor brushes because there's a lot of chalky uh, substances in this paint and I really do not want to uh, end up with um, abrasion on very fine bristles of some of the watercolor brushes. So I'm using these cheapos. Well, not all of them cheapos. These two are from Rosemary. Um, so they're darn good brushes. But these are sort of 
stuff I've had kicking around for years. Some of them have been used, some have never been used, but I felt that as a start, I'll use these and see how we get on. And all I've got here is a very, very simple landscape. And it's again, it's the Romney Marsh. It's my favorite place. It's where I'm born and bred. And I just wanted to give something fairly simple like these and the hills in the background coming up again and a nice big sky on this particular day it really was a monster of a sky that was um and did eventually drop an awful lot of rain so that's all i'm really going to do i could do a little bit more drawing just to give myself a fair indication where that big dark cloud is and the light clouds underneath and the darker clouds down to the top of the hills more as a guide than um sort of actually keeping the faith as it were and keeping it spot on on these marks i've got a general indication so the first things first with uh using gouache is in fact what i will just quickly do is put some white out which i haven't done yet now i'm going to put a little drop of white that's very fluid okay not a problem with that now this is a very old white that i pulled out the other day just to play about on some beige uh, paper and it's pretty much dried up so i can actually use the two and just see how they compare using the white from a semi-dry to this uh, just poured out they're both sprinkled by the way so they that should be a nice control this is just drier and this is very fresh as you could you just seen but i so i'm going to come in with some initial colors and you tend to go very very light or not light but thin more than light and you wait for that to dry and then you come back in with your more opaque values so i'm going to come in with let's try and remember what i've got here some indigo let's just put some of that indigo down put a little bit more water to that maybe a tap of the white there we go let's come in with that white so we've got a very pale color and i'm just going to lay that in to my sky color generally overall color now the thing about as i understand with gouache itself and i keep changing the way i say it to be fair not quite sure how it's pronounced i'll put a little bit of black a little bit of ivory black coming into that there just to play around with these now as i say they are designed to be opaque color so you know you you're not going to look at them so much as a watercolor i know you can do i know the idea is that you can swing between watercolor and uh, gouache and you can combine the both they're both after all made almost the same way and uh, so you can get away with an awful lot i'm just going to come in with some color down through here and across the top now i will level with you guys apart from a little play around on a scrap of paper with that white the other day this is the very first ever <laughs> gouache that i've done in many many years so sink or swim this one will work or not work accordingly <laughs> we shall see what we shall see and you'll see the whole lot you'll see the faults and the problems that i encounter um as we go forward now that what i just did then i went in with another layer on top of an already wet layer that really doesn't work out too well because it's still wet enough to pick up the color underneath and it will cause uh, a bit of a problem uh, in as much as it won't be a lovely opaque surface but as long as you're aware of all these things then you're not going to come too many problems i'm just going to come in with that old white now let's just see how that works see that works very very well gotta say just going to come in here and And that's going to get decidedly cooler 
that comes away from us. I'm going to add a bit more white into that and take some of these forms down this way like that and just change what you're seeing. The paint and a little bit of black, sorry. Uh, there's probably a little too much black. Let's come back in. We can put some more blue into that, it's not a big deal. You can play around with that and get it to where we want it to be. I'm just using the one brush. And now I'm coming in with some big marks. These are the cloud. back in with a bit more white this is where we've got a huge amount of contrast working there's a little bit of paint left in my brush which is actually working quite well because there are a mingling of clouds through here which I'm now suggesting because I'm depositing indigo instead of white in certain places which works quite well As for brushes, I love the rosemary brushes and I do like the idea of using synthetic brushes. I think I've done enough to call this painting complete. Um, you can always do a bit more, and, but I'm aware that this probably uh, everyone's gone to sleep now and um, turned the video off and I'm probably talking to myself. I don't know. So I'm just going to put in a few more marks through here, taking off some of the worst of that. Just a few suggestions of um, light in this big bulky cloud form because I know it's meant to be opaque color but I do like the idea of having some variations in light in the clouds they naturally uh, occur so I'm going to put a little bit of light and a bit more white I think I'm picking up a lot of this old color so what I'm trying to suggest to myself is that old color fresh color does it have to be out of the tube fresh or can it have um, a dryness about it can it be easily used does it suffer do you get less color going on does it alter the opacity by having to add that much water loads and loads of questions of which right this second I don't have all those answers but over the course of this year I will be doing an awful lot more with gouache I hope and I hope that uh, you'll join me for some of that and if you have enjoyed this one then please by all means give it a like give it a thumbs up all helps and um, let me know in the comments section your thoughts with relation to a, a gouache paint how have you got on with it how are you using it do you intend to use it are you still sitting on the fence whatever it might be just let me know in the comments what you think about it and indeed if you'd like to see more from me um, then I'd love to hear on that and I'd love to uh, add some of those in the future so yeah, just let me know and uh, we'll take it from there and in the meantime I'm going to get on and let you get on and I'll catch you all in the next video take care everybody all the best bye bye